Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. Now this video is going to be about how to pour a simple basic concrete slab. And the video is going to be geared more towards beginners so they can they can figure out how to pour a concrete slab, what it takes, and what you need. So we got a 24 foot by 20 slab and this is what it's going to look like when we're done. Um, it's six inches thick and we're putting the wire mesh to it right now and we're putting some of these what's called slab bolsters under the wire to help hold the wire up into the concrete and the wire mesh is just reinforcement that helps hold the slab together if the slab does crack the wire is going to help hold it together and not let it separate so that's what we use for reinforcement and we also use another type of reinforcement that goes into the concrete itself called fiber mesh so and I always use that in all my pores so I got fiber mesh for reinforcement and we got the wire mesh in the slab if you guys if this is your first time watching my channel my channel is all about concrete and it's about teaching you helping you learn helping you achieve success with concrete and about helping you grow your business too if if you want to start a concrete business and grow it and grow it successfully my channel is all about that so we're using what's called a conveyor truck on this one. We didn't have real good access to the slab. I couldn't back a truck up to it um, because of some things that were in the way. So we're using a conveyor truck and that truck reaches about 40 feet with that conveyor. So it, it just helped make the, the pour go a little bit easier. I'm also using what's called a 4,000 PSI concrete with three quarter stone in this mix and like I said it's got the fiber mesh in it that's a pretty standard mix for us uh, when the weather gets colder this is late in the fall for us pouring this so if it was in the middle of the summer we'd probably just use a 3000 psi mix which is plenty strong enough for for a regular concrete slab now this slab is butted up against that other building which is on a slab so it's kind of a, a slab addition which which is what a lot of you guys might be doing and whenever we do a slab addition we always drill and pin into that existing slab so we drilled some holes in there with a hammer drill and then we drove some rebar in there and that's what's tying the two slabs together now I'm using my laser I've got a, a self-leveling laser set up just off the screen and I have that receiver on a grade stick and that's what I'm using to set my grades in the middle of the slab now the outside forms are right set to grade and I'm magging my edges and you know we use a mag float when we mag edges like that to smooth the edges off and the mag float is the one that's on the top of this picture and then steel trowel is on the bottom we use a steel trowel for when we finish concrete but not for when we pour the only thing we use when we pour is this the mag float so you could as you can see I was going around checking my edges with the uh, with the laser and I got that one wet pad set in the middle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the concrete enough of concrete dumped out so we have something to work with here like I said this slab is 24 feet by 20 so we'll get you know half to two-thirds of it dumped out and then we'll get it screeded and then we'll get the rest of it dumped out now I'm over there making sure the boards stay straight. We've got a string line on the top of the board, so we use the string line to make sure the boards stay straight. Sometimes the concrete will push the board out a little bit if we don't have enough bracing on it. And if that's the case, then we'll just put some braces and kick it back in so it's nice and straight. We're also putting a double row of rebar around the edges and we usually on a slab like this we'll just drop the rebar in like that and then we'll push it down a couple inches to make sure it's right in the middle of the concrete. So there I am making another one of those wet pads and that laser allows me to make that wet pad the exact same height as the top of the form and we're going to use those wet pads as our, as our uh, screed pad to go off from in the middle of the slab. You'll see here in a minute. And we're checking right up against the building with the screed to make sure it's all nice and level up there. And then we're taking that screed and we're striking from the pad we magged up against the building to that wet pad I made with the laser. And that's what we're using in the middle to screed off from. So Darren's out there on the outside screeding off the top of the form. 
and I'm just screeding off that wet pad. And when I'm screeding, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that I don't dig into that pad and I'm not riding high on the pad. So I'm, I'm leaving a slight drag mark with the straight edge as I'm screeding across that wet pad. And you'll be able to tell it'll leave a tiny little line right with the edge of the screed. The very end of the screed will leave a little bit of a line. And if that's the case, then you know that you're scoring right. So you're not creating a dip or a hump. And then when we get to the other side, you know, you screed off the top of the form. And then you use your wet pad again in the middle. And that's how we get the a slab screeded. And, you know, the slab could be this 24 by 20. It could be 10 by 10. It could be 30 by 20. I mean, the size doesn't really matter. The, the procedure is usually always the same. Get your concrete poured out to a certain point. Get your pad set. Screed it. And then either finish pouring like we're doing or... You, if you have a bull float, I'm going to show you how we bull float here in a second. You know, you could bull float that section, but the bull floating can wait a few minutes if you need to be. You know, if you need to get this uh, poured out, the bull floating can wait for a few minutes. So we're going to pour out 90% of the rest of this and just leave a little empty space right there in the corner, just in case we're a little bit high back there. So we just tell the concrete driver to stop, wait for a minute and let us get this pulled down and screeded down. And we don't want too much concrete in there and have to shovel it out and make a mess on the outside of the form. So, you know, you gotta leave yourself a little bit of hole there in case you're high. And then if you need a little bit more, you just dump in a little bit more when you get down to the end. You can see I'm setting those rebars in right on the edge around the corner. Just pushing them down in with my mag a little bit and then I'm magging the edge smooth. And we, we always like to mag the edge smooth with the, with the mag float so it gives us a nice smooth surface to screed off from. And it, it helps make it easier to finish too. If you're gonna finish this thing either by hand or with a power trial later on, it makes the whole process a little bit easier to finish. So now Luke is on the inside there straight edging off the part of the floor we already screeded I'm using the top of the form and we're just pulling the concrete down with that screed that's a 14 foot screed um, if you didn't have the help like this if you were doing it by yourself you could use a shorter screed you could use a seven or eight footer or even a ten footer you just have to make more of those wet pads in there to go by that's all so you can see now I went back and I grabbed the bull float and the bull float what that's going to do is it's going to push down the aggregate push down the rocks and bring up some paste so it makes a nice smooth surface and you could I mean technically you could leave it like that we usually don't leave it just bull floated we usually always put some type of finish on the concrete whether we finish it by hand or by power trial or broom finish or something we're usually always doing something to it and I'll show you on the next video coming up my next one coming out that how we how we finish this slab so if you haven't subscribed go to head down there and hit subscribe now so you can see that video and you know I also have a bunch of other videos that teach you how to do this stuff I also have you know I have a concrete slab course down there in the description guys if and I I take you right through all the steps it shows you all the forming how to pour how to how to finish how to power trial um, all the steps on how to do your own concrete slab so if you're interested in, in trying to do your own or if you if you kind of have an idea but you're not quite sure that slab is what you need that concrete slab course is what you need to to help you through that I'll, I'll teach you step by step how to do your own slab and it, it's pretty thorough it's got a 30-day money-back guarantee so I mean if you if you buy it and you don't like it I'll just give you your money back after 30 before 30 days but uh, check that out so you can see how that bull float works gets it nice and smooth and then right now what I want to do is I want to show you how we we're putting anchor bolts in here so the builder wanted to be able to bolt his first sill plate down to the concrete we do this on quite a few slabs and we call them anchor bolts I don't know what you guys call them let me know down there in the comments some people call them J bolts and they come in different lengths 
we're using six inch anchor bolts and these are a half inch anchor bolt you can see right there they're half half an inch wide six inches long and we just wet set we call this wet setting we'll wet set them right in the concrete so they're going to be putting a two by six sill on so we try to get them in about two and a half inches from the form and we leave them sticking up anywhere from an inch and a half to two two inches high if depending on what the builder wants and if they don't tell us what they want we just do whatever we think they want and space them about four feet apart or so and then the builders take it from there and that's how we you know that's how we pour and bull float finish a concrete slab so for those of you guys again if, if you want to learn how to do this you can go down and check out the course and this is what it looks like when we're done thanks for watching guys